Joining us now via the Deseret First Credit Union hotline is former BYU standout linebacker, four-year NFL veteran, and BYU TV college football insider David Nixon. David, welcome back to the show. Hey, always great to be on. Our Twitter question today is kind of a fill-in-the-blank situation. If BYU beats UCLA, then what? Then I lose my mind again. <laughs> um, <laughs> listen, I, 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 you know, obviously everyone kind of has BYU, including the Vegas Lions, has BYU just getting blown out in this game. I, I don't think that's the case by any means. Um, I think BYU makes this very competitive. But if they can go into the Rose Bowl uh, against a great Pac-12 team who might be the top of the Pac-12 this year, uh, you know, I, I think I really do lose my mind. I, I think that just sets them up. I think, you know, then they go on the road to Michigan and they just keep rolling from there. So this is a huge game for BYU. I think a lot of people have written them off. But I think Cougar Nation, seeing what they've seen the last few weeks, they realize that obviously anything can happen. Yeah, BYU's ranked 19th, maybe a little overrated. BYU's a ranked team. I think they deserve that after those two wins. The way in which they've done it has been miraculous. I don't think that BYU uh, will, can rely on that kind of miracle, you know, to win every game per se. So what are maybe some of the keys to the game for you, to be, for BYU to beat UCLA? Well, I, I think it comes down to BYU's defense. Can they stop this Josh Rosen passing attack? We, you know, you look at last week against UNLV, uh, they, they ran 98 plays. So you know, BYU's been used to this whole go fast, go hard. Well, 98 plays is go very fast and go very hard uh, by this UCLA offense. So I think BYU's defense will have their hands full. I think they're well conditioned. Uh, we've heard Manel Pakula this week talking about how, how well they feel going into that fourth quarter and how well conditioned they've been. Um, so I think that's a plus for them. I think they'll be ready. Um, but it really comes down to that passing attack. Attack. Can BYU step up? Can this secondary that's gone through injuries and suspensions, can they mesh together? And, and can these younger guys, you know, Hadley, can he get back on track? Um, Hanneman, can he continue to improve? So there's a lot of question marks, uh, you know, on, on the defensive back end. Um, but we've seen great production from that BYU you know, front seven, uh, especially Bronson Kafusi. I mean, you go back and watch that Boise State film. He was everywhere. Tackles for losses. He was dominating the tackles. Um, you know, his pass rushing moves. Everything's improved this senior year. I think it all goes back to him being able to put his hand back down in the dirt and, and do what he loves to do best, and that's rush the passer. Um, but even then, he's been very stout. So the defensively, it, it comes down to the passing attack. But, uh, you know, I'm confident with, with what we saw last week, what we saw against Nebraska, the blitzing, the schemes, everything uh, has been, I think, better under Coach Mendenhall uh, this season. And, and I think it will only continue to prove going into UCLA. Follow him at D underscore Nixon on the Twitter machine. David Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation. Earlier you brought up the odds makers line. BYU right now a 17-point underdog <laughs> against UCLA. David, where would you put the line for Saturday? Hey, which is incredible. I think it started out at 15 and a half, which means people continue to bet on UCLA, which makes it even more a, a bigger slap to the face. Um, I, you know, if I were – you know, setting it. I'd probably put it around 10. I still think BYU covers. I, I still think BYU um, can go in there and upset UCLA. But, I mean, 17 to, uh, with, an, uh, with a ranked team I think is, is pretty absurd. But that's what the market's bearing right now. So, um, you know, that, that's what they're going with. But I, I think uh, BYU on the road, obviously, you know, BYU's been in a big environment. They went to Nebraska, played in front of 90,000 fans, and they'll have the same type of, of atmosphere. But I think at UCLA, I look back to my 2000, 2007 year, when we played at UCLA, the entire end zone was BYU fans. I'm talking 25,000 fans were there uh, to watch us play for BYU. The whole thing was blue, and it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. I think the same type of crowd, now that BYU is 2-0 and ranked, will come out and grow for this game as well. And I think you'll see, uh, you know, I, I, not, it'll be obviously more friendly towards UCLA, but I think you'll see a healthy dosage of BYU fans. I was at that game as well on the sideline, and I remember being shocked by the influence that that crowd had on the game. And I think that this week, BYU fans are super jazzed. In that situation when you played, that was Max Hall's second start. BYU was 1-0, had just beaten Arizona. It's kind of a different situation. I think BYU fans are excited, and the Southern California contingent will bring it. What's it like to play in one of the most storied uh, facilities in college football, the Rose Bowl, David? Oh, it's it's absolutely awesome. I, and and you, you, as a player, you try to be in awe in the fact that 
this is cool. You recognize the history, but you don't want really to get too caught up in it because then you're almost like getting mind psyched by, by going to an opponent's stadium. But I, I remember when we went there, the Rose Bowl had just been renovated uh, because I think they were trying to get a bid for the future Olympics or they were trying to get some bid. And so all the locker rooms were just pristine. I mean, NFL nice um, locker rooms. Then you walk on the field. The field is different from BYU's grass and the grass here in Utah, but it's kind of like the uh, like a putting green type grass. And you're just sitting there like, man, this is this is big time. You've watched tons of bowl games and touched tons of national championships we played on this field, the history there. Um, and you soak it all in, but then you realize, look, it, at the end of the day, it's just a field and it's just a stadium. We've got to go out there and play a game. So um, no question there's a lot that goes into it, but at the end of the day, it is just another field and you're lining up against another opponent and uh, trying to go hit that quarterback as hard as you can. BYU TD <laughs> College Football Insider David Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation. We already gave you the Twitter question, which is, if BYU beats UCLA, then what? But I want to take it one step further. What would happen to your expectations for this BYU team if, and I know it's an enormous if, they go 3-0 and after beating UCLA? Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, then you go to a team in Michigan that a lot of people have started to kind of say they're struggling this year. Um, you know, they bounced back last week, uh, obviously after the first loss week to, uh, to, to Utah. But, um, you know, the schedule for BYU then lightens up until you really go to Missouri. That's a neutral field, but basically call it at Missouri. Um, and so really the sky becomes the limit. And, and then you start getting the conversation that Boise State's in every year is the non-P5, the, the, the highest you know, ranked non-P5 to get into one of these New Year's Day Bowls. Uh, which is obviously what all BYU fans want. They, they, they want to continue to remain relevant and stay in that conversation. And, and BYU set up the schedule this year that if they can do uh, what they're currently doing, and that's just winning, uh, then they'll be set up very nicely for, for a big-time bowl at the end of the year. So um, the sky's really the limit. I, you know, if, if you can get through this gauntlet, especially these first three games, which they've already done 2-0, and if they can get through UCLA and then have that confidence and carry that into Michigan and go 4-0 and in September, I mean, that's uh, – uh, it's that's huge, absolutely huge, especially with all the losses, with Tui Loma going down, with the suspensions of Nakua uh, and Taki Taki, and of course the biggest one with, with Taysom going down. Going 4-0 with that schedule and with those injuries and suspensions would be absolutely remarkable. And that'd be wild. David, you played in three games against UCLA. There was a, two games in 07, of course, the Manu Malaguna blocking the Vegas Bowl at the end of that season. And then the 59 to nothing drubbing at, in Provo is the last game. What, what was it like to play UCLA three times in what felt like, you know, a little less than a year, right? Yeah, it was. I think it was like 12 or 13 months. Um, it was it actually, we kind of got sick of them, to be honest. Especially <laughs> <the third time. laughs> like, oh, I was playing them again. You know, the first very time we were at the Rose Bowl, and uh, like we just talked about, and it was, it was awesome. And then we, you know, we, we lost a close game there, had some turnovers late. Um, that kind of got it out of a little hand. But then we go play them in the bowl game. So, of course, we're excited to get the rematch. Um, and we go and block the, the, the easy chip shot field goal to win that one and, and end the season on a high note. And then we meet in the very next season at home, and I'm telling you, it, it was amazing. 59 nothing. I think I stopped playing after like the third quarter and just was on the sideline just relishing and just soaking it all in. Um, and and it was, I, I think the the fashion of that at home, it was one of those games where UCLA couldn't do anything right. I mean, I think they were fumbling kickoffs off their face mask, and we were covering on like the five-yard line scoring, and it was just a ton of turnovers, and then defensively, obviously we shut out UCLA, which was something we hung our hat on, and we shut out Wyoming, I think the week before, so yeah. or the week after. So it was back-to-back -back shutouts, and we were riding high. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's always fun to play a Pac-12 team. And it doesn't matter if it's a down year for them or an up year for a Pac-12. Just to play a Pac-12 and, and kind of, especially with Utah being the Pac-12, kind of shove that in their face that, hey, we obviously could hang with this, with this conference if, if, if we were in it. Um, and, and just playing on that high level and, and, and playing against those guys. So um, I, I know the guys got to be excited about this week, first Pac-12 you know, opponent for them this year, um, and uh, you know, going at that. So, should should be a great game. I'm obviously stacked about it. I mean, you couldn't ask for better storylines with both teams being ranked and the the hype kind of lean into it. David, we'll finish with this question right now. After two games watching BYU, and you have done after further review, and you've seen the film, you talk to the players and coaches. What is the biggest concern you have right now for the 19th ranked BYU football team? 
that's a good question. I, I think more than anything, it's just consistency at this point. We saw, we've seen glimpses of, of greatness on both sides of the ball, uh, and we've seen both sides struggle. So I think it's consistency and, and, and just getting all parts working together. We saw the run game finally come about in the second half last week uh, against Boise State. You know, and, and the passing game has been here and there. We saw it explode really against Nebraska with, with uh, you know, few receivers over 100 yards. So um, just having all parts of it come together, and I think that's, you know, now that you've got the first kind of few games out of your way, you got the jitters out of your way, now these young guys that are freshmen have now played. They have some experience underneath their belt, so there's no more, hey, I'm a true freshman, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, that, that excuse is now over. you got everyone kind of on the same page, and now the question is, can you put a complete game? And frankly, they're going to have to put a complete game together against UCLA because this is too good of a team uh, to go in there and only have just a running game or just a passing game working or defensively just being able to stop the run or, and not the pass. So they've got to make sure they're all on the page, all same page this week. And if they are, I, I legitimately think BYU has a great shot at going in there and upsetting the Bruins, uh, but they, they've got to be clicking on all cylinders. David, we'll let you get back to your real job on the golf course now. <laughs> there you go. Appreciate it. i got to head out. It's a nice rain. <laughs> Not really. Thanks, David. <laughs> Take care.